So what are some of the things you could say you've learned being in business? You know, the, the, the president always encourages youth to be in, in, in business so that we can create jobs. You know, there's so many companies that want to support entrepreneurs. But by, by virtue of you being an entrepreneur yourself within the agriculture space, what have you learned about business that maybe you could also share to another young person watching this podcast? Welcome, everybody, to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, your host, as always, every Tuesdays and Thursdays, right here on the Private Property Channel. Today, we've got an exciting farmer that we're going to be speaking to. Um, and uh, just to get a, a little more, get to know about her journey, uh, know a little bit more about herself, um, how has she grown as an individual uh, being in the farming space, Yet again, her challenges, the successes, and um, you know the awards that she's won, and what that means to her as a farmer. If you have any questions for our guest today, please feel free to comment, and we will obviously uh, respond accordingly because this podcast is for you. And don't forget to uh, to subscribe onto our YouTube channel. So today we're speaking to Kinelo Rapesu. She's a farmer, and her enterprise is called KR farming enterprise let's get to know her Kinele, how are you doing i'm great thanks and how are you Bali? i'm doing fantastic it's great to see another woman farmer and to have another conversation with a female farmer so basically how did you get into the agri industry and maybe tell us a little bit about yourself um i think first of all again um first of all thank you again for having me well, when it comes to agriculture, I always say it chose me. I didn't choose it at all. Mm. I had no idea. I had no interest in to being a farmer. I wanted to be an economist. So with my first degree, I was studying to be an economist. But my father has been a farmer for the past two decades. So I've always been following him around, going to his meetings. He was um, the chairperson of the National African Farmers Union. So most of the time I would go hand in hand with him to his meetings, go to offices together, go to the farm together, but I had no interest at all. So as time went by, I started developing the love for farming, following my father's footsteps and doing a lot of things and helping on the farm. And that's how I got into the agricultural sector. Right. And so what is it that you farm, Kinele? We farm with crops. Currently we planted um, maize and soya bean. We also have got livestock, pigs, and cattle. Okay. So you said your farmer was in the industry. So are you running the family farm, or did you now digress and start your own farming enterprise? Currently, I've got my farming enterprise, but I don't have land. So the land that I'm using is my father's land. Okay. I am the director of his business, and I am the CEO of my own business. Okay, so with the crops that you've mentioned, is that both his and your business or um, is it just crops that you're all farming collectively? It's conjoined, it's both ours. Right, and so why grain farming? Is it something uh, that because your dad started, you decided, let me do crop farming and pursue into a little bit to livestock? Or did your dad start with livestock and then you obviously bought the crop farming element into the, into the family business? It was already there, but most of the time he planted maize, so I introduced crop rotation, whereby after a certain season we plant soya bean, after a certain season we plant sunflower. So I just mixed the, 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 the crops. So it was already there, already operating, but on a smaller scale, now we extended the hectares. Fantastic. And I see, let's talk about you winning the 2021 RPO NARPO Emerging Farmer of the Year. How did that happen? <laughs> I also don't know how that happened. <laughs> I got a call from them as an invitation to attend the conference. I went to the conference with the mentality of going to learn and networking with other farmers, getting to know different spheres of the agricultural sector. So on Thursday evening, there was a gala dinner. And during that gala dinner, 
while sitting there clapping hands for other people and enjoying their success, my name was called. Apparently I was nominated for being the Emerging Farm of the Year and I won the award. So whoever nominated me and mentioned my name, I'm grateful for that. Wow. And what has, what has that award brought to you? I mean, is there a difference now that you are an award-winning farmer? Um, what has it brought to you and, and, and the changes basically in your life? It brought a lot of expectations and pressure from people, hey? Because not <laughs> everybody wants to know you. They want advice. They want you to mentor them. But for me personally, I was grateful that finally a young black female farmer, because I got it at the age of 24, the award that, finally we're getting the recognition that we need within the industry. Mm -hmm. Finally, we are being appreciated for our contribution within the agricultural sector. So for me, it meant a lot, that award. And it meant a lot to my dad as well, because if it wasn't for him, I don't think I would have been the award really. Yeah. And how's it like uh, um, within those dynamics, you know, working with your father in the business? You said you are a director in the business and then you are a CEO of your own business. How is it like juggling the two responsibilities? On top of that, I'm a student, so you can imagine oh, wow. how difficult it is. Yes. Yeah. I'm, doing, I'm currently doing my second degree. So with, with both businesses, um, the KR has not expanded that much, the KR Farming Enterprise. Currently, I help people with business plans, um, you're doing vaccinations, and sometimes a bit of mentorship here and there. So the, the, the one that weighs a lot of weight is being the director of my father's business. That's where I, ha I am there full time, doing everything that you can imagine within the business from bookkeeping, from making sure that we produce the best of genes, from making sure we access the correct markets, if dealing with employees and so forth. So it, it's a bit challenging, but we strive because that's what we want. So we, we push. And having him to support me and be there as my advisor is the best because I get to learn at the very same time when your father is your best friend, it's not that difficult to talk to him about certain challenges, you know, and he can see challenges even before I face them so he can lead me into the correct direction. Mm. So what are some of the things you could say you've learned being in business? You know, the, the, the president always encourages youth to be in, in, in business so that we can create jobs. You know, there's so many companies that want to support entrepreneurs. But by, by virtue of you being an entrepreneur yourself within the agriculture space, what have you learned about business that maybe you could also share to another young person watching this podcast? But business is not easy, especially within the agricultural sector. We're still fighting for a lot of things because some of us, we, we're farming on land that is owned by the state and we're leasing on a 30-year term. We still have a lot of struggles in accessing funds. We still have a lot of struggles in terms of um, doing environmental assessments. We still have difficulties in getting the simplest incentives like seeds from the government. So we are struggling, but from my point of view is that through all the struggles, we, we need to stay persistent through it all. Because, and when we're doing something that you are passionate about, it's not that easy to give up because you love it. You are passionate about it. You want to succeed. You want to see it grow. So when my passion is pushing me through all these difficulties because um, we suffered from livestock, we suffered livestock theft, we suffered from the climate has damaged our, our soya beans, so it's not going to produce the type of profits that we're expecting even after spending so much money for the input cost. So business is clearly not easy, but if you strive to push and you are passionate about something and you are strategic, you will strive definitely, you will be able to continue and keep on moving despite all the challenges that you're facing. Yeah, but besides the bleak picture that you've painted about struggling with finance, access to land, owning land, you know, we're renting from the state for about 30, ter 30 year term lease. And I mean, in agriculture, uh, financial institutions depend on security as land for you to be able to raise money, you know, over and above other things yes. that you could do to raise money. Maybe talk and share to us uh, the milestones that you've achieved over and above just winning the award, over and above just starting a business, what hits, what's personal to you um, that you've said when you're alone in your room and you're saying, Kinedo, I did it. What are some of those milestones that, that, that you, 
you um, go through as, a, as an individual? You know, it's, it's the simplest things, you know, um, from the stage where a cow gives birth, I get so excited because I'm pushing myself to say, I want to get to a winner stage and um, achieve a certain uh, weight and achieve a certain quality. So when I sit down and measure my milestone, it's literally, it's the, the, the little things, you know, being able to, to fix the farm, being able to, to access the market, no matter how small it is, but the fact that we could put in money, being able to help other people. I, most of the people that I help are through social medias, being able to work with people from common ages as well, because they don't have any vaccination plans and I do everything from my own pocket. So I being able to help them means a lot to me. So yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's progress, it's success yeah. to me. Yeah. And what does being a young, successful farmer mean to you? And especially we are in youth month. How can we draw and attract other young farmers to start farming and also be successful in their farming ventures? I'm still yet to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm still climbing the ladder. I'm getting yeah. there. Um, I always say you build a foundation. Yeah. Your, when you have a stronger foundation, it's easy for you to build anything that you want, any way that you want it. Secure your foundation. Secure your foundation with all the knowledge that you can have about farming. Have the practicality, whether you get the knowledge through university or like myself, having a mentor of having someone to follow or following your broadcast as well and learning from others, do it. Build that foundation so that when you start, you can know where you are going. Access all the resources, all the information. Make sure that you've got a well done um, business plan. Make sure that your finances, when you go to the government and say, can I please have one, two, three? Can I, when you go to mm -hmm. the private sector, say, can you please sponsor me with one, two, three? Everything is in, in place. You've collected every information, any document that you need. So build that foundation before you want to climb the ladder. We cannot climb the ladder without starting at the bottom. So when you have got a solid foundation, it's easy for you to build. So whatever that you strive to do, whether you want to do piggery, poultry, whether you want to do cattle, build that foundation, know the different kind of breeds, know the kind of materials that you need, know the kind of feed that is accessible to you, know your environment, it's very important. So when you've accessed everything, it's easy for you to go up. So most importantly, have a solid foundation. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, uh, Kinelo. And one word that keeps popping up in what you're saying is support. Are you currently affiliated with any agricultural uh, associations and are you receiving support from them as well as maybe government or private institutions? Currently, no, no. It's just me and my dad. All right. And from a mentorship perspective, is, uh, is your dad the only mentor or have you uh, befriended other farmers maybe that are slightly more experienced than you who are currently mentoring you at the stage? Yes, I'm, I'm being mentored by one of Stepnik's um, project manager, Patrick Squatla Squatla. He's my mentor. So I've been learning a lot from that person who has excellent, excellent recommendation from the company who has done an amazing job, who knows everything about cattle that you can mention to him, he will tell you. That's why I got the interest um, in farming with the Bosmara breed because of my mentor as well. So um, my dad also has mentored a lot of people and um, most of the people in my circle, I would say those are befriended. They are way older, you know. Um, I'm still, I want to befriend those who are my age so that we can share our challenges and work together and climb the ladder together and hold hands and help each other where we can. So I'm still trying to associate myself with those. Um, uh, there's other farmers that I've met on Twitter. We've built friendships, but we've never met um, face to face. So we are still about to do that. Yeah, and I'm glad you're mentioning Twitter. As a young person, you know, we also are starting to rely on technology, on online platforms, social media, also to get some information. How important do you think social media is for young farmers to learn about the industry uh, and maybe connect with other individuals? It is important because we, that's where we spend most of our time. 
yeah. on social media. <laughs> so sometimes you get your clients from social media, you get help from social media. I was looking for a planter last year. I, I just posted on Twitter that I'm currently looking for a planter and edible planter. Within 30 minutes, I got more than 10 recommendations from wow. people. So, so social media is helping us in different ways because even people who want to post um, available, available vacancies in their workplace, they post them on social media. So for us, it's, I think it's very important to invest in it. It's helping us in multiple ways. We're even getting necessary information from social media because Twitter has got spaces where people host different spaces and talk about different things in agricultural sector from not only in South Africa, but they involve other people in Africa as well. So mm. I think it's, it's a great investment. Yeah, and over and above youth, within your farming community, are there other female farmers that are currently farming and do you interact and engage with them from time to time? You know, um, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm the only black female in my area. I'm surrounded by whites only. And um, those who are black and farming are probably my father's age from 60 and above. So, <laughs> <laughs> so in my area, it's just me. The youngest is just me, honestly. Yeah. honestly it's just, yeah. Yeah. It's As a sum of our conversation, Kenela, I just want to know, what can we do to get more young people farming? I mean, uh, there are a lot of agricultural graduates, but uh, it seems like it's, we just stop there, right? With the education, studying mm. agricultural mm. economics, crop production, animal production, but it just stops there. So how, how much more, what, what more do we need to do to get young people into farming so that you don't find yourself in a situation where you are in a town or community where you're the only mm. farmer um, and any other farmer, young farmer out there. So what can we do as young farmers to get more young people into the agri-sector? You know, Mali, um, I was telling one of the people from the research council that in order to, for us, help us, not only those who are commercial, but help those who are in common ages and emerging so that we can accommodate students. You, we are not fully accredited to take students to do internships on our farms. We've been asking for that. I, for one, have been asking for that, saying that even if I cannot provide more, but give me students at least 10 who can do their service training on my farm. At the very same time, we need to be realistic, Mal, is that we are, fa we are facing the greatest challenge, which is theft. So when it comes to our farm, we're not fully open to accommodating everyone because we don't know the motives. I, for one, have accommodated a lot of people on my farm and I ended up losing a lot of cattle, more than 60, after performing artificial insemination on those cattle. I lost mm. a lot of money from that. So it's not easy for me to open my door to anyone and say, come to my farm and learn, you know. But at least if a university says to me, here are... 20 students who are doing animal production, accommodate them. I know who I'm going to hold reliable. I cannot just take anyone from outside and say, come, it's not going to be that easy. So if a university gives me students, it is way much better. I've been talking to um, our, what do we call this? Um, they give, the government gives us someone who comes and check on the farm here and there. An I've extension been officer. That, yes, an extension officer saying that, can I just get a letter that I can accommodate students, but I've been struggling with that for the past two years. Mm. And I've got students from different universities saying that our university is asking us to go and do practicals. And I can't accommodate everyone if I do not even have the letter that says I am allowed to do so. And then what if the lectures comes to the farm and say, no, this farm is not accredited to do so. So it will be a waste of time. Mm. So yeah. honestly, we are doing by all means. You know, we're posting pictures we are encouraging people, we're taking videos, we are doing this and that. There's auctions, we invite people to say, no, come to an auction and see how things are played out in the market. See how things are doing. And, you know, there's Farmer's Day, come and see and learn about different breeds, different people who are there to tell you about genetics, that those who are going to tell you about the environment, those who are doing plants and vegetables, they are there as well. We are attracting them in so many ways. We've got Farmers Weekly, we've got um, Landbo. They are there, but are we using them to our advantage? Yeah. You know, 
if I can, if I can, it's just like 20 bucks to buy farmers weekly. It's in English, you know, just read through, learn about it. I post articles, I post pictures, but there's nothing that I don't do. The only thing that unfortunately is that I cannot accommodate because I do not have the letters that say you are allowed to stay student. I credit me, I'm more than welcome. You Fantastic. can read pictures of them, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you're doing a great initiative. And I mean, I couldn't agree more. I learned a lot through what I do as a farmer online and also reading agricultural exactly. magazines, reading the stories that are shared by farmers, how they started their journeys, their challenges, their successes. And I took all of that and tried to apply them in my own farming journey. So I think you definitely are dropping gems. Uh, I'm wishing you many more awards to come because just just by you talking, it, it, you're sharing information, you're teaching, you're helping. And uh, yeah, I think that's how we can immerse ourselves into the industry as young people. But thank you so much for joining the podcast, Ginele, and for speaking to us today. Thank you very much for having me. It was an honor to be here. It's a pleasure. That was Ginelo Rappe. So she is a farmer at KR Farming Enterprise. She's a crop and livestock farmer. She started not so long ago, but she's a director at a, farmer's bus at a father's business, as well as a CEO of her own farming enterprise. So come on, guys. If her story is anything but inspiring, then uh, I, I think you should just start to get, get into farming. And it's more so, you know, it's getting lonely out here for young people. You know, we want to see more young people out in the farming community so we can have friends, we can engage with each other, learn from each other. There is so much material out there, as Ginella had shared with us. And so do your bit to learn about the industry. And um, it's also just unfortunate to hear the challenges that we as farmers face. She did share that, uh, you know, she does get a lot of livestock theft. Therefore, she's had to force and close her own farm for security measures. However, we are doing our best as young people to teach and educate other young people around farming and definitely make use of social media because you can get a lot. You can get not only clients, teach people, but also grow your business through social media. If you found this podcast or conversation rather quite insightful, please continue to like, subscribe to the following uh, to the farming podcast, follow our page and uh, yes, share some suggestions of who and what you would like to hear or, um, or what you would like us to discuss right here on the Farming Podcast. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed our, the show, and I will see you next time.